والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإخسان إلى يوم الدين All blessings and salutations upon our noble prophet and messenger our master Muhammad uh, upon his family upon his companions upon his offspring and upon all those who follow in his footsteps until the day of reckoning May Allah make us all uh, from amongst them. To continue reading from the book As Shifa by Qadi Iyad, we come to the section number 10, Praiseworthy Qualities. In this section, he says there are some praiseworthy qualities and noble adab. Adab is a unique uh, Islamic terminology which includes both etiquettes, manners, the proper way of doing things, if you will. It includes both the inward state as well as the outward uh, form. So he says here there are some praiseworthy qualities and noble adab, etiquettes you could translate it as, uh, which are acquired. Meaning a person acquires them. They are not innate. He says that all the men of intelligence agree that the one who has them is virtuous and someone who has even one of them is highly esteemed. The Sharia praises them all, meaning these noble character traits, commands to them and promises and promises perpetual happiness to those who have them. Meaning commands to them, meaning uh, commands us to uh, inculcate them, live by them, apply them. He says some of them are described as being part of prophethood as a whole. They are called good character or good character traits. Good character consists of balance in the faculties and the qualities of the self and following moderation rather than inclining towards extremes. And noble character, praiseworthy character in the Islamic tradition is, is in between two extremes always comes in between two extremes, the extremes of excess and the extreme of, uh, of uh, not doing anything at all. Uh, so an extreme of weakness, an extreme of going uh, excessively over the top. This is moderation. This is the path of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and he says, our Prophet was completely perfect in all of them and completely balanced so that Allah praises him for that saying, you are possessed of a mighty character. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Aisha has said, his character, peace and blessings be upon him, was the Qur'an. He was pleased by what it finds and pleasing and angry, um, sorry, he was pleased by what it finds pleasing and angry according to what, he, what it finds um, uh, hateful. And this was the noble character of the Prophet, peace and blessings uh, be upon him. Therefore, they say, if you truly want to understand the Prophet Wasallam's character, then study the Quran. And if you want to understand how the Quran should be implemented, then study the Prophet, peace be upon him's biography. And he was the one who knew Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most, and uh, he, it was to him that the Quran itself was revealed. So if you want to understand how the Quran is to be applied in a living human being, in a practical manner, then look no further then the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said, I was sent to perfect noble character. When he, alayhi salatu was salam, was defining his mission. He said, وَإِنَّمَا وَعِفْتُ لِأُتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ I was best, uh, I was sent to perfect noble character. And Allah, as in the verse that was mentioned earlier, you are possessed of a mighty character. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another verse in the Quran, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِذْكُمُ اللَّهِ That um, 
say, if you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then follow me and you will be loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so therefore, uh, the path of the Prophet, peace be upon him, is a path of, uh, of refined and noble character, uh, the, uh, the path of akhlaq, the path of good adab, etiquettes and manners. And Anas radiallahu anhu uh, said, Anas radiallahu anhu uh, was the companion who served the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, in Medina for a whole of 10 years. For a whole of 10 years, his mother sent him. He said, be at, uh, uh, at the service of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he would, uh, one of the young Ansar of Medina, he said, the messenger, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, was the best of people in character. And we see this also in the, in the young boy, Zaid ibn Haritha, who came to Mecca, was captured. Uh, by some tribes in Mecca. This was even before prophethood. Uh, and uh, he was serving the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, uh, in Mecca. Uh, his parents came looking for him, trying to find where he was. Eventually they found that uh, some tribes had stolen him and, uh, and uh, he ended up in Mecca and he ended up serving the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. When he... Um, Zayd ibn Haditha was given the choice uh, of going, returning back to his family or staying and remaining with the Prophet, peace be upon him. He chose remaining with the Prophet, peace be upon him. When his father and his uncle came and asked for him to join them, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said the choice is Zayd ibn Haditha's. If he chooses to go back, then he goes back. But if he chooses to remain, then he may remain. Uh, when the choice was put to Zayd ibn Haditha, he said, I choose to remain with the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, over going back to my to the to my to the familiarity of my own family and tribe and people. And he remained with the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, because of the noble character of the Prophet, peace be upon him, which he had witnessed nowhere. He had he would he knew that he would not find such a magnanimous uh, individual anywhere. So he chose wisely. To remain with the Prophet, peace be upon him. Ali ibn Abi Talib said something similar. In the Prophet Wasallam's case, according to the people of knowledge, these qualities were possessed by him from the time he was created. From the beginning of his natural constitution. So they were innate. They were part of his very makeup. Peace be upon him, endowed to, uh, upon him or given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says he did not acquire them or learn them through, ed through education. He received them by divine generosity and the special gift of his Lord. That is how it was with all the prophets, reading their life stories from the time that they were children until the time that they were sent as prophets makes one realize this, as is evident in the cases of Isa, Musa, Yahya, Sulaiman, and others. They were all naturally uh, disposed to these qualities and they were given knowledge and wisdom when they were created, meaning from a young age. So basically what the author is saying here is that these noble character traits uh, were all uh, part uh, of these prophets and were not um, something that they had to strive and struggle uh, to acquire. They didn't have to train themselves to acquire these these product character traits, but rather the origins, the basis, the disposition of the Prophet towards those noble character traits was innate. It was created to them, created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in them. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we gave him judgment as a child, as a child. The commentators say that Allah gave, this is in reference to Yahya, and uh, the commentators say that Allah gave Yahya knowledge of the book of Allah while he was still a child. Ma'mar has said that he was only two or three years old. The children asked him, why don't you play with us? And his reply was, was I created for playing games? 
subhanAllah, in this, in this day and age, many a person lives through this life coming out uh, and not coming into this life and leaving this life without ever having realized the reality that this child, Sayyidina Yahya, had come to realize as a young boy when he said, uh, was I created for playing games? Meaning that I was created for a greater purpose than to spend my time uh, playing games and wasting my time. Or in today's terms, they call it killing time. Subhanallah. Just on that note, the scholars say that time is your life. Time is your life. When, part of, when time passes, then so does your life. And wasting time is perhaps the, the, the most apt description of it, ironically, would be to say killing time, uh, which is literally uh, killing an opportunity that was given to you, a moment in time that was given to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, confirming a word from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Yahya here confirmed the Isa when he was three years old meaning confirming the prophethood of Isa alayhi salam when he was merely three years old. He testified that he was the word of Allah and his spirit, meaning created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without, without a father. It is said that he confirmed him when he was in his mother's womb. Uh, Yahya's mother said to Maryam alayhi salam, I feel what is in my womb bowing to that, to what is in your womb, to greet him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala quotes what Isa said to his mother when he was born, saying, one below her said, do not sorrow. And this is according to uh, This is in one reading. It is And according to that reading, it, it means and the one below her said, the one below her. وَنَادَهَا مِنْ تَحْتِهَا means from below her. مَنْ تَحْتَهَا means the one, the one below her. Called, do, called out and said, do not sorrow. Some say that the one who called out was Isa alayhi salam himself. His words when he was in the cradle are quoted in the Quran. When he was a young boy in the cradle. I am the slave of Allah. He gave me the book and he made me uh, a prophet. These were the utterances of Isa alayhi salam when he was in the hands of his mother, uh, Maryam alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, once again, we made Sulaiman understand it and we gave him judgment and knowledge. He says the judgment of Sulaiman when he was a child is mentioned in the case of the woman about to be stoned and in the story about the child in which Dawood followed his judgment. At-Tabari says when he was given the kingdom, he was only 12 years old. He was only 12 years old. And the stories that he mentions here is a story of a woman who was accused of, uh, of, of, um, of fornication. And uh, she was brought before Dawood alayhi salam to judge. Four witnesses came forward and they had all conspired together to accuse her wrongfully of having committed this crime. Uh, of fornication. So before Dawood salam, they came and he, according to the four witnesses, uh, ruled that, uh, that she had in fact committed that crime. When they passed by Sulaiman he, um, he inquired or he um, examined each one of the witnesses individually and not together, not collectively. Um, so he examined it and he found that their testimonies were inconsistent when they were examined individually as witnesses. So inconsistency in the testimony proves that the testimony itself was false and conspired. And therefore, uh, the judgment was passed that this woman is not, uh, had, had not committed the, uh, the crime of fornication of zina. And so uh, it was that wisdom of Sulaiman salam that was given to him at a young age. And in relation to the young boy, it is said that uh, uh, it is mentioned uh, in the hadith 
actually, that uh, a woman, uh, two ladies, an older one and a younger one, had a baby child, uh, had a baby each. Um, one of the babies was carried by a wild animal. And so both women remained with one. Uh, they were the, both mothers, but there was only one baby. And both the mothers claimed that this baby was theirs. When they went to Dawood alayhi salam, Dawood alayhi salam ruled that the baby was the son of the older woman. They passed by Sulaiman alayhi salam. And Sulaiman alayhi salam then inquired. And they said, this one claims and this one claims that this is their son. Um, and uh, Dawood alayhi salam has passed the judgment of the ruling that the son is belongs to the older woman. So Dawood Sulaiman alayhi salam, with his insight and wisdom, said that let them split this baby in half, since each of them has, claims this baby to be theirs, this child to be theirs, and let them split this child in half. So the younger woman said, no, 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 the child belongs to the to the older woman. The, the, the child belongs to, do not split the baby in half, the child belongs to the older woman. And through that, Suleiman alayhi salam uh, came to realize that it was the younger woman who was the rightful mother of this child because of that compassion and mercy that she would rather her child live in the arms of another woman than for uh, her to see her child being killed. And when they investigated further, uh, according to Imam al nawawi he says that this, uh, it may have been that the mother, the older woman, then, uh, then uh, admitted that the child was, in fact, the younger woman's child. In any case, this, both these incidences indicate the, the depth of knowledge, the wisdom and, uh, of Sayyidina Suleiman alayhi salam, even at a young age. Even at a young age. The story of Musa grabbing Pharaoh's beard when he was a child is similar. The commentators say that the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we gave Ibrahim right guidance before, have the meaning. We guided him when he was young. We guided him when he was young. Mujahid and others said this. Uh, Mujahid and others said this, as in uh, the, this opinion, that we guided him uh, when he was young. Ibn Atta said, he chose him before he created him. Someone else said when Allah, when Ibrahim السلام, was born, Allah sent an angel to him with a command from Allah to recognize him with his heart and to remember him with his tongue. So the angel came to the Prophet Ibrahim السلام, when he was young and he said to him, the command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to you that you should recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your heart and remember him with your tongue. And Ibrahim السلام, said, I have done it. He had already done it, meaning due to his, his the depth and breadth of his knowledge and wisdom. And he did not say, I will do it. That was his right guidance. This was the guidance of Ibrahim السلام. He said that when Ibrahim السلام, was thrown into the fire and tested, he was 16 years old, only 16 years old. So he had gone through such a test and to remain so steadfast in the face of such trials and tribulations and difficulties and hardships, and yet he was only uh, 16 years old. He said when, uh, when the, the author here says when Ishaq was tested by the sacrifice. In fact, uh, the position of the uh, overwhelming majority and narrated of uh, uh, the ijma of the scholars of Ahl-Sunnah, and he said that it is ijma of Ahl scholars of Ahl-Sunnah, that um, the the one to be sacrificed was in fact Ismail alayhi salam and not Ishaq. And Ibn Qayyim uh, mentions some 20 reasons for this. He says the one to be uh, sacrificed uh, was in fact Ismail alayhi salam. This is the belief, as we said, of the overwhelming, the uh, majority of the Muslims. Uh, of the Muslim, of the Sahaba, and the scholars of the Sahaba, the Tabi'een, and the scholars of the Tabi'een, the overwhelming majority, all of the scholars of the Sahaba, and the scholars of Tabi'een. However, there is some, uh, a very small minority, 
uh, who are not uh, um, uh, due to the, the small number not considered to, um, to hold any weight. Uh, they, who say that it was his heart. And this is what he mentions here. He says, when his heart was tested by the sacrifice, he was seven years old. This, of course, is the opinion of the uh, both uh, the Jews and the Christians that the one to be, the sacrifice one was in fact this was his heart. But uh, we we know that the sacrifice one was Ismail alayhi salam. When Ibrahim sought a proof in the star, the moon, and the sun. He was 15 years old when Ibrahim salam saw a proof in the star. This, this story is mentioned, um, the seeking of proof and evidence was in fact to, to a, a, a way of uh, guiding others to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, so Ibrahim salam was proving to the people around him the belief in the stars, the sun, the moon, as being God instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is illogical and does not make sense. But this rational uh, reasoning that Ibrahim alayhi salam went, uh, took his people through, uh, was uh, occurred when he was only 15, uh, 15 months old, he says. Uh, sorry, 15 months old. Now, the, the position of the majority of the scholars is that that was you know, a way of proving to his people uh, that uh, in, in which case it wouldn't be that he was 15 years old, in which case it would be that he was much older than this, uh, proving to his people the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, it is said that Allah gave revelation to Yusuf when he was a child at the time his brothers threw him in the well. Allah says, we revealed to him to tell him about what they were doing. So they threw him in the well, and while he was in the well, the revelation came. While he was in the well, the revelation, the revelation came uh, to, to Ibrahim, to Yusuf, السلام, sorry, in the bottom of that well, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him that a time will come where you will tell your brothers about what they, were, what they are doing. And there are more traditions like these about the prophets. All of these narrations he's mentioned here to emphasize to emphasize the, uh, the, the intellect of the prophets, the wisdom of the prophets, the knowledge of the prophets, even from a very young age. He says, Amin bin Tuhab, then he moves on to tell us about the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. He says, Amin bin Tuhab said that when the prophet وسلم, was born, he spread out his hands to the earth and lifted his head to the heavens. And other narrations, he pointed with his with his uh, with his finger to the heavens. In the declaration of the oneness of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, he said, "Peace and blessings be upon him." About himself, uh, as I was growing up, idols were made, idols were made loathsome to me, and po uh, poetry was made loathsome to me. I was not tempted by anything done in the Jahiliyyah except on two occasions Allah protected me from them and I did not repeat that. So this is uh, the idol worship was the dominant uh, form of religion or belief system in Mecca when the Prophet ﷺ was, sent as a, uh, was, was born in Mecca. And yet idols, were he was disinclined, they were loathsome to him didn't like the idols, even before prophethood and messengership came to him. Also poetry, uh, here poetry that is referred to here is poetry in which there is mention of uh, uh, boasting um, uh, unjustly uh, and also in which there is mention of things that are prohibited. At the time they weren't prohibited, but later on they became prohibited. Uh, so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam dis disliked that type of poetry. As for other poetry, in which there is a reminder of the purpose of a person's life, uh, and a reminder of the Creator, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, poetry in which there is an encouragement to do good, poetry in which there is a reminder of the hereafter, poetry that uh, calls upon a person to, and encourages a person to live a morally um, uh, upright life, 
And this is not the poetry to which the Prophet ﷺ is referring to, that it was made loathsome to him. But rather, sometimes he would ask for the poet poetry of that sort to be recite, recited to him, and he would listen uh, to that poetry. Uh, peace and blessings be upon him. And also poetry was recited in the Prophet's uh, masjid, peace and blessings be upon him. And in Islam, we have a very rich tradition and history of poetry, of praise of the Prophet, uh, poetry glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, poetry in which there is a reminder of noble character, a poetry in which there is an encouragement to do good and discouragement from doing bad, reminder of the hereafter. All that poetry is praiseworthy and encouraged in the Islamic uh, tradition, starting right out from the time of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. So the statement here, that poetry was made loathsome to, it, to me, meaning the negative, boastful, uh, empty kind of poetry that uh, carries no meaning, and uh, no uh, beneficial meaning, and also incites uh, towards, um, towards, hey, towards uh, wrongdoing. He said about you know, Then he said, "I was tempted. I was not tempted by anything done in the jahiliyyah except on two occasions. Jahiliyyah here meaning the period before Islam. And it was a time when people lived a very immoral life, and it was common and uh, and not looked down upon for a person to live an immoral life. And he said, I was not inclined towards that. Nor did I. I was nor was I tempted by any of that jahili way of living." Except, except for two on two occasions where he attended a wedding ceremony. And when he attended, this is all before prophethood. Uh, when he attended, he fell asleep immediately and didn't wake up until the, the heat of the sun. With the heat of the sun, he woke up, peace and blessings be upon him. So on the two occasions that he uh, went to attend the wedding ceremonies in which there would have been things that are at the, would later on become uh, prohibitions later on would become at the time they were not prohibitions but later on they would become prohibitions uh, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused him peace and blessings be upon him to go asleep and he did not awake until the, the sun had risen and he said from then on I didn't I wasn't even inclined or tempted to go there uh, at all even to see or to observe what they do at those weddings uh, or those occasions uh, where they gather uh, together as youth in Mecca. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected him before prophethood from that which would become blameworthy even after after prophethood. Such was the extent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection uh, for him, peace and blessings be upon him. Then he says, the prophets had come, uh, the, the author says, the prophets had complete mastery of the affair and the breezes of Allah waft over them one after the other. And the light of the knowledge of Allah shone in their hearts until they reached the goal. They reached the goal because Allah chose them to be prophets and to obtain the noble qualities without education or discipline. Allah says, when he came of age and was straight, we gave him judgment and knowledge. So the knowledge here was not something that was acquired through an education by sitting in front of teachers, but rather it was a knowledge that is revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu said, My Lord is the one who raised me and he raised me well. Meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who, uh, who granted the Prophet sallallahu all of those noble character traits that he had and also all of the, all of the knowledge that he acquired uh, was through revelation. Was through revelation. He says, we find that other people have been formed with some of these qualities, but not all of them. A person is born with some of them, and it is made easy for him to complete, it, complete them with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's favor, meaning noble character traits. Some, some people are naturally inclined towards those noble character traits. And then with Allah's favor, they are guided in that path of noble, of noble character, noble conduct, and they remain steadfast on that until they meet their Lord. Uh, he says, uh, we can see this by the fact that he creates some children with excellent manners and an inclination towards excellent manners. 
uh, cleverness, truthfulness, or generosity, and some with the opposite of that, and some with the opposite of that. Then by acquisition, people can complete what is lacking, meaning through training. It is by discipline and striving that they acquire what they lack and balance what is in uh, what is in this equilibrium, this equilibrium meaning that is imbalanced. People differ according to these two states. Everyone is eased for that which he has been created. So he said some people have good manners, good character traits, uh, whether it be uh, cleverness, truthfulness, or generosity, and some children uh, don't have that by nature, but through discipline, through teaching, through education, uh, they can, uh, by striving, they can acquire those character traits. They say in Arabic, al-hilmu bit-tahallu, wal-ilmu bit You can acquire forbearance and patience through acting, through uh, forbear, through uh, struggling against yourself to contain the, the impulses of the self and desires of the self. Um, thereby you acquire, you struggle against yourself and you acquire that, that uh, character, that noble character trait of forbearance and patience. Likewise with knowledge, if a person does not have knowledge, then they need to acquire that knowledge and by studying and seeking knowledge, one acquires uh, that knowledge. And he says, everyone is eased for that which he has been created. And then he says, this is why the Salaf, meaning the pious predecessors, had some disagreement about whether qualities of character are innate or acquired. al tabari related that one of the Salaf, the pious predecessor, said, good character is innate and natural and the natural instinct in the slave of Allah. He related this from Abdullah bin Mas'ud and Hassan Basri, and we have found it to be sound. We have found it to be uh, sound, so says the author. Uh, so the uh, every human being uh, has a ability uh, to acquire noble character traits. Uh, and he says, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, and so you, the, just to go back, the raw materials, if you will, if you will uh, are there for those noble character traits. And it's just a matter of that raw material to be molded and to be shown the path that it needs to take. He says, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas related that the Prophet said, the believer can naturally have every imperfection of character except for treachery and lying. And so there are these, every, uh, these, two, um, these two character traits or imperfections of character, whether it be cheating, treachery, and lying. These are treachery and lying. A believer cannot uh, have acquired these character traits right? because they go against against the true meaning of belief and submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Belief is sincerity. And sincerity is the opposite of treachery and it is the opposite of lying. Umar ibn al-Khattab said, boldness and cowardice are natural qualities which Allah places wherever he wills. Boldness here meaning courage and cowardice. He says they are innate qualities. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places them wherever he wills and is part of the sustenance, almost what he's saying, that Allah distributes amongst his servants. He says, these praiseworthy qualities and beautiful, noble attributes are numerous, but we will mention their fundamentals and indicate them all. We will verify and establish Allah willing that he may, that he, uh, may Allah bless him and grant him peace at all of them, meaning the Prophet, peace be upon him. So the discussion in this chapter was about presence of these noble character traits uh, in prophets uh, innately and uh, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala endows the prophets with these noble character traits, right? And then he tells us that uh, within human beings, uh, they vary. Some have, um, some people have these noble character traits uh, right from birth. Uh, others need to struggle and strive to acquire them and earn them. Um, but there is two character traits that a, a believer can never be accustomed to. They are treachery and lying. Then he says uh, uh, that he will go on here.
in this book, in the following few chapters, uh, describing these qualities, these noble character traits, which are very many and numerous. But what he's going to do is give us the, the core um, noble character traits and proving that the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, had acquired and mastered all of them, or was endowed with all of them. Peace and blessings be upon him. Alayhi salatu was salam. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.